Although the committee does not require you to give evidence under oath, I should advise you that this hearing is a legal proceeding of the Parliament and therefore has the same standing as proceedings of the respective Houses. The giving of false or misleading evidence is a serious matter and may be regarded as a contempt of Parliament. The evidence given today will be recorded by Hansard and attracts parliamentary privilege. Now, to assist with the transcription of the public hearing, it would be appreciated if you could please state your, your name before responding to each question. I'll now invite you to make a brief opening statement before we proceed to discussion. So over to you, thank you. Uh, thank you, it's, it's uh, Andrew here. Is that audio okay now? That, that's good now, thank you, Andrew. Okay, thank you for the invitation to appear today. Uh, we've already extensively gone into the 2019 election and our submission and in our election review, so I won't go into that too much today, but I will have a short statement and I'll pass it over to my colleague, Larissa, who headed up our First Nations justice campaign during the last election. Gallup is fiercely independent. Our pride in our independence is shared with our members, more than one million ordinary men people who participate in public life by taking local actions to strengthen our democracy. Our vision is to make Australia fair and flourishing for all. Gallup is not beholden to or associated with any political party. I know that many members of the coalition struggled to accept this, despite the outcome of repeated investigations by the Australia Election Commission, which has found that Gallup is not an associated entity of any political party on three separate occasions. We're not only independent, but we go on above and beyond our disclosure obligations. Gallup has met all its disclosure requirements with the AEC since being classified as a political campaigner, which are greater for political parties and associated entities. GetUp also takes additional voluntary steps, such as disclosing all donations over $10,000, whether they are one-off donations or in aggregate, which is lower than the AEC's current $14,000 threshold. We publicly disclose all our donations on our website as they are received in real time. GetUp's donations and our annual reports are transparent, published for all to see. While it certainly opens up us up to increased scrutiny, we believe it's the standard that all major political players should meet. You can visit our website at any time and see a real-time snapshot of what our members are up to and how much has been donated. It has been said, increasingly said that politics is broken. Our solution called for a five-point plan to rebuild trust in democracy. A key point is the introduction of expenditure caps for federal elections. The 2019 election was unprecedented in both the amount of money received in donations and the amount of money spent. More money was spent on the 2019 election than ever before, but everybody's expenditure in this, the last election was dwarfed by Clive Palmer's $90 million advertising bids. This unprecedented campaign spending by Clive Palmer set a, set a dangerous precedent, providing a template for a US-style arms race between billionaires and corporations battling it out. Vested interests overshadowing the public interest is not what get up members want for our democracy, it's not what Australians want for our democracy. The best idea should win, not the biggest checkboards. Some of the excessive paid advertising content, which arguably brought the election result, pushed the boundaries of truthfulness. There can be no doubt that the enormous volume of paid advertising, coupled with the misinformation contained in those ads, has further eroded people's faith in our political system. This record break in the attempt at buying influence in election was not an isolated attack on our democracy. Clive Palmer followed up our federal election record breaking excesses by jumping into local government politics. Palmer and his associated companies donated over $500,000 to a council city council election ticket earlier this year, with a $400,000 donation breaking the record as the largest ever political donation in Queensland local government. The Queensland Crime and Corruption Commission has found that for every $10,000 received by local councillors, it increases their vote by more than 50%, all things being equal. A $400,000 donation, $400, donation is clearly not all things being equal. Comprehensive donation reform is vital to rebuild trust in our democracy. Expenditure caps are the single most effective measure for immediate reform. Without the need to spend so much money, politicians won't need to collect so much money. Most politicians hate fundraisers and begging for money, so this is an easier solution for your pain. A cap on campaign expenditure is not a niche idea. It is supported by many of the organisations, political parties and ordinary members of the public who made submissions to this inquiry. We have expenditure caps in New South Wales, South Australia, the ACT, the Northern Territory and now in Queensland. 
And to be clear, GetUp expects fair and reasonable expenditure caps to apply to us as well. The Democracy 2025 project has regularly surveyed members of the public on this issue. In 2017, before anybody had ever seen one of those cloud climate at billboards, 73% of Australians supported limiting what political parties and candidates can spend on elections. Democracy 2025 has also federal MPs on this issue. In a joint project with this committee, they found that 75% of federal MPs supported expenditure cap, which means at least 40% of government MPs support this change. This idea is practical, possible, and popular. It's so popular that over 40,000 GetUp members since February have added their name to a petition calling for a federal election expenditure cap. I add their weight behind that call today and are happy to table this petition to the inquiry. Many MPs and political parties have put in their submissions calling to reduce the length of early voting. These submissions have outlined the difficulty political parties and candidates have in staffing early voting centres, as well as early voting not having the full information on the time comes to vote. As GetUp represents ordinary people, we have a different view. Firstly, Australians are literally voting with their feet and choosing to vote when it suits them. We would be very concerned with any attempt to reduce the voting period if it made it harder for casual workers, shift workers, carers, students, and all those who struggle to get to a polling booth to exercise their democratic right to vote. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had three major elections, and in each, the percentage of voters taking advantage of early voting has increased. The Australian Electoral Commission is to be commended for the efforts they went to in the Edinburgh by-election to make it easier for people to vote. That should be the model going forward. Now is definitely not the time to make it harder for people to vote. In regards to voters not having full information before they vote, political parties only have themselves to blame. The practice of releasing costings only two days before the election has to stop, as does the corrupt practice of having a campaign launched towards the end of the campaign. I'll now hand over to my colleague Larissa Baldwin to briefly talk about our First Nations campaign. Thank you, Andrew. I'd like to acknowledge the Yagara and Turrbal people from Brisbane where I'm coming to you today. My name is Larissa. I'm the First Nations Justice Director at GetUp. The First Nations Justice team at GetUp worked in the city of Lingiari in the 2019 election. We focused our efforts on enrolment, getting out the vote uh, on, on election day with community volunteers on the ground and also produced a scorecard based on key issues as determined by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members at GetUp. We then scored all parties and candidates on their policies. Our core objective was to facilitate the participation of First Nations communities across the seat of Lingiari in the election. During our work in remote communities in the election, we found many examples of First Nations people who had been removed from the role. And the first time many of them knew this was when they went to vote. It is our experience that the AEC is operating a one-size-fits-all approach to electoral role management, and that simply doesn't work for many First Nations people, especially in remote communities, for a range of well-established reasons. The standard of contacting voters by mail before removal is not appropriate based on our experience. More resources and better approach needs to be taken to ensure First Nations people are not inadvertently taken off the roll. When it comes to enrolling people in the first place, the Federal Direct Enrollment Program relies on regular mail service and we accept that this has been successful for urban enrolment, but this simply does not work for remote communities. Following the closure of the Northern Territory AEC office, which we acknowledge was not initiated by the AEC, it is concerning that there doesn't appear to be a tailor-made programs to increase the rate of enrolment for First Nations people, particularly in those remote communities. GetUp worked at booths and mobile voting centres in 11 remote communities. On multiple occasions, we saw First Nations voters being turned away. In Nooka particularly, many people waited for hours for translation service and were turned away. We had multiple instances of people coming up to us and expressing that they had voted before. Translation services, even within promotional materials are not widely used or accessible uh, across the 2019 election. There are limited notifications of upcoming elections in the community. We are, often we would find that the initial enrolled vote materials posted up on notice boards, but in regards to the release of the actual remote polling schedule, we found at the booths we visited that there was no signage or notice of when the poll would actually take place. The increase of democratic participation of First Nations peoples means a stronger opportunity for everyone. In our report back to our entire membership post-elections, hundreds of members replied to us to let us know that they believe that this is some of the most important work that gets up during the entire election. 
I'd like to thank the committee for allowing me to make uh, a, a contribution here today. Uh, thank you very much for that. And we'll kick off with questioning now and I'll hand over to uh, uh, Mr. Aston to start. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, I take it you can hear me? Right. First of all, can I kick off with, um, it's common for the national directors to give evidence in these types of settings. I'm just wondering, uh, your national director, Paul Austin, not available? Uh, and if so, why not? Um, I don't think it's common. Um, Andrew and I are the specialists in this area, so we're here to give evidence. Okay, so available, but you chose for others within your organisation to give evidence. Is that right? Pardon me. There's, there's three, two of us, and Larissa, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with a question I'll end with in relation to the first line of questioning, and that is this. I'm obviously a South Australian Member of Parliament. My focus will be in and around the activities of Get Up in South Australia in the um, most recent federal election. My first question is a pretty straightforward one. Does Get Up take responsibility for the stalking behaviour that we saw in Boothby and Mayo at the last election? Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I should say, firstly, any stalking behaviour is terrible and uh, no, we wouldn't take responsibility because there's absolutely no evidence to suggest Get Up or any of its members were behind any of these horrible behaviours. Uh, what we found was, um, you know, the reports were never substantiated. Uh, we had extensive investigations into the behaviour of any of our members and we're confident that uh, none of our members uh, were involved in any sort of stalking behaviour. We'll come back to that, Mr. Idris. Um, my next question relates to the campaign technique known as bird dogging. Does Get Up train activists in bird dogging? Look, um, we've seen, uh, as an avid viewer of ABC 24, I've seen plenty of press conferences with coalition members, uh, well, all MPs, sorry, from, from all political parties. Sorry, this is a question about Get Up, not coalition members. Sorry, uh, sorry. Um, all, all parliamentarians jumping in and interrupting each other's preference conferences. Um, if ordinary uh, members of the public want to do it, we don't see any problem with that. Do you accept that bird dogging is derived from the use of bird dog to hunt game? Could you repeat the question? Sorry, we just cut out. So bird dogging is a phrase which is derived from the use of the of a uh, from the use of bird dogs to hunt game, right? So do you accept that the campaign technique bird dogging is to hound or pursue someone or something with usually malicious intent? No, that's definitely not anything to do with what our... You don't accept that definition of bird dogging? It, it, you can take that as your definition, perhaps, um, but it's most definitely not anything we engage or ask our members to engage in, no. Could I ask the Secretariat to bring up slide one? For members' benefits. Sorry, Mr. Passon. Uh, due to the technological difficulties in setting up the WebEx, we weren't able to put the slides up this morning. Okay. Well, I'll just need a bit more time, and I'll run this through this for colleagues. So, um, did you authorise in 2018 a post regarding volunteers at the National Hive? I couldn't say without seeing anything. Um, okay. At all. Well, I can tell you that on your website uh, in 2018, there was a uh, a call for volunteers at the National Hive. It was a call to be part of the National Hive facilitation team. We'll need six to eight facilitators to run workshops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the workshops would be run across six different areas. The last being tactics, a tactics orientated session, phone banking, visibility, MP focused actions, and bird dogging. What do you say is bird dogging in the in the get up political campaign context? 
Uh, so for us, what I'm talking is uh, going to the same event as a candidate or a member of parliament is going to, uh, trying to get our message uh, on the screen in the background. Okay. So then um, I've spent some time looking at GetUp's guide, Ask the Tough Questions, which it's clear is adapted from one called Bird Dogging Candidates by Move and Amend, a US group whose motto is to end corporate rule. This guide gives tips on how to surveil candidates and advises would-be, quote, bird doggers, close quote, to be in the candidate's path. It says, and I quote, the hardest part is figuring out where your target will be ahead of time. Plan ahead by calling their campaign office, sign up to receive their emails, check out their Facebook page and read relevant media. It then poses the question, do they have any routines you could use to your uh, advantage? So my question is, um, do you accept that um, this guide essentially instructs and nay, it incites random get up supporters to bird dog uh, or to stalk and follow candidates around? Most definitely not. I will in fact just take issue with the use of the word incite. It's a criminal offence and I'd invite you to perhaps reframe that question because never does anywhere in any of our get up um, you know, literature say that anyone should be ever committing any criminal offence. In fact, it's almost preposterous to think that our 70 year old members in Boothby and, you know, in, in the relevant areas in South Australia would be up to anything anywhere quite so um, horrendous sounding as you've described. Um, our members, if, if I could finish. Sure. Our members are, you know, uh, teachers, you know, nurses, students, they range in age, they range in demographic. We don't encourage people to behave horribly or to bully people. So the suggestion that somehow a guide that wasn't ours or adapted from something else encourages how we would instruct our members who are just run the middle, you know, they're part, they're part of the South Australian community um, to do something horrible is just it's without basis, unfortunately. So I'd have to take issue with that. And in fact, we, we if you look at our submissions, a number of our um, <coughs> were actually from would be from the area in South Australia, and they talked about the, the wonderful time that they had and how they engaged in, in in the election. We're not about making people's life difficult. What we do is empower our members to have impact, and part of that is to have a conversation with their representatives. Your material specifically referred to targeting. It specifically refers to bird dogging. Both techniques are about making life uncomfortable for candidates. Do you accept that? No, with respect, I think both techniques, as you describe them, might be, but as we describe them, they're about getting people to speak to their members of parliament, speaking to them about issues that are important to them. In the 2019 election, our members spoke strongly on the issues in South Australia, particularly around climate and around housing and around matters that really were really important. I mean, we had people go down dressed up as bananas in pajamas because the ABC is important to them. There's nothing to suggest that the banana, the B1 and B2 are somehow not to offend them or be horrible um, at, at a rally. That just doesn't happen. Um, was the late David Walsh a member of Getter? No. Was Dr. a member of Getter? Pardon me, you just cut out there. Was Dr. John Pitt a member of Getter? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Can you take that on notice? Uh, I could try, yeah, sure. Was Mr. Paul Bunny a member of Getter? Uh, I don't know. What does it take to be a member of GetUp? You sign a membership form. Is it formal in that way? It's not as formal as a membership form. No, no. You have to uh, um, get uh, sign up to an emailing list, make a donation, commit to doing some activity. Taking actions is what makes people members. 
Um, Thank you. So, in, in telling me that Mr. Paul Bunny and Mr. the late David Walsh were not members of GetUp, you're telling me that they weren't at any events or on any mail, emailing lists. Is that what you're suggesting? People can turn up to any sort of event. They don't have to be on a mailing list. They don't have to be a member. Um, you know, I've got no control. We've got no control to really turn up to any of our events. I mean, during the election, One Nation supporters turned up to our events to heckle us. That's not to say they're members because they turned up to our events. I want to be clear about this. What what is the um, the mechanism by which one becomes a member of Get Up? Then, because I thought I heard you suggest that if you're on the mailing list and you turn up to events, you're a member of Get Up. Generally speaking, if you are on our mailing list, it's because you've taken an action. So an action is something like perhaps signing on a petition or you know actively involving yourself in uh, some of Get Up's campaigns where we empower members to do these things because these are issues that are important to them. So I just want to be clear because obviously it's very important that we don't want to mislead the committee. I'd, I'd, I'd hate for you to mislead the committee and therefore Parliament. Oh, no are you suggesting that David Walsh and Mr Bunny were not members by that definition, i.e. they hadn't taken action, they hadn't signed uh, a petition, etc., etc.? I have no so We can confirm that David Walsh was not a member, yes. As for the other two names that you suggested, I, I can't, I just don't know. Can I just ask who who wrote the um, get up bird dogging policy? I don't know that we have a bird dogging policy. There might have been some referencing in electoral materials, but I couldn't tell you if it's off my head. Well, who who wrote who wrote those materials, which presumably are a campaign guide? Those materials would have been a collective work by get up staff, and 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 perhaps um, some of our uh, volunteer leaders. Um, still um, with uh, Mr Walsh, um, as I said, the late Mr Walsh, um, um, he was a regular member at Get Up Functions in South Australia, wasn't he? Uh, as my understanding, Mr Walsh was a local photographer and yes, he uh, his connection to Get Up was he liked some Facebook posts of ours. Sorry, what was that? Was that he? His connection to get up was he liked some Facebook posts of ours and attended pre-campaign um, um, uh, events with you. Was correct? Uh, and my, yes, that's my understanding. Uh, but you know, he, he's a local photographer. Uh, I think we might refer to him in the past tense because I can tell you he, he recently passed away. Right? Um, now, it's true to say, isn't it, that Mr Walsh followed Liberal candidate for Boothby, Nicole Flint, uh, effectively everywhere, both um, her personal and public engagements. Uh, he had a zoom lens camera. Um, he would follow her day and night, uh, whether those events were public and private, and he's uh, to accept that. I can't really comment on what the late Mr Walsh did. If that's the assertion you're going to make, then so be it. We're um, was at any time get up concerned about the activities of Mr Walsh as they relate to um, um, Nicole Flynn and the campaign in Boothby? It, it's not really my place or get up's place to be able to say what an individual does. If he presumed to do something on our behalf, I would be worried. But as far as I'm concerned, it's when he, Mr. He, he never operated on our behalf, so it was never something that we were concerned. When Mr Walsh was reported by police and that attracted media attention, given that he'd been um, and was familiar with Get Up and had been to pre-campaign events, and um, did Get Up take any action in relation to Mr Walsh's behaviour? I.e., did you count them in any way? We just missed the end of your question there. Um, did, you, um, did you speak with him in relation to his behaviour? No, I had no reason to. He, he, um, like I said, like the colleague said he liked a couple of our Facebook posts. Um, we can't control, you know, millions of people like Facebook posts every day. Um, yeah, people don't turn up to campaign events in, in the electorate, do they? Look, maybe they do. Have, millions. Okay, we, fair enough. Yeah, I, I can't be uh, Nick, held responsible. I've got, a, I've got a series of get up code of conduct which I'll put on notice I'll just uh, tell committee members about that if I can move to Mr Paul Bunny uh, Mr Paul Bunny um, admitted following Liberal candidate Mayo uh, in his car and indeed posting her personal address on Facebook 
Um, was um, I just want to be clear? You you suggest that Paul Bunny was not a member of Kenner. Uh, I, I can't say so well. Recollection or knowledge of that person, that person, that name. So, yeah, we'll have to take that on notice. Okay. Well, I'm reading um, a report here. Get up suspends Paul Bunning. So, I suggest you do take it on notice. It says here, Mr. Bunny has also been suspended from activist group Get Up. You're not aware of that? It's not familiar, not in the front of my mind, no. I'd ask you to take that on notice and I'd ask you to provide. Um, information to the committee regarding what action get up took vis-a-vis -vis, uh, mr paul uh, bunny particularly whether he's a member uh, and what action was taken as a result of the charge of stalking which was laid against him if you could perhaps provide us with a bit of information for the source that would be fantastic through the secretariat i can it's, a, it's abc news story sure i'll provide it to you by the secretariat Okay, if I can move to the activities of a Henrietta Smith, who was a Get Up election director, is that right? She was at the time, yes. Uh, in, 20, uh, in 2019, she described Get Up's campaign strategy as, quote, we're getting people razzed up with town hall meetings and getting people working in their own neighbourhoods with limited oversight, limited oversight from us. It's low control from headquarters. Do you accept that's a statement that Ms Henrietta Smith made? Without seeing it, I, I couldn't accept it. But we definitely did empower our members to do things at, on the on the ground. Yes, is that the general mode of operation from Get Up? Uh, Raise people up and then step back with limited control from HQ. I think that's a disingenuous way of describing how we have our members involved in uh, the democratic process. What we do is we tell them um, we can help you provide, uh, I guess, local. Um, opportunities to talk to your local MPs, perhaps, and also engage with your local members about issues that are important to you. What we do is we speak about issues. We're an issue-based campaign organisation, and during an election time, we, people might get quote unquote razzed up because it's time for change. Elections are important times for members to be able to say to their parliamentarians and their representatives what they want, and that can involve lots of different things, and it can look in a number of different ways. Mr Edries, I appreciate your curated words, but the reality is Ms Henrietta Smith at the time, it was her words raised and her words low control. The reality is that's Get Up's model, isn't it? You come into communities, you raise people up, you train them in arts like bird dogging, and then you step back and say, oh, they're not members of ours. Uh, we, we, we engage very closely with our memberships and we have good volunteer connections. What we do is we empower members on the ground to engage with their local parliamentarians and with their local, um, I, I guess, uh, members and their local volunteer networks to suggest that we somehow deliver some nefarious training to people that they are going to go out and do some horrible things is really disingenuous. We had, How do you train people in the art of bird dogging then? So we, we had over 9,000 volunteers at the last election. They put in over 34,000 hours of volunteer time. We're very proud of the efforts that they made. Um, you know, they contributed to the, the fabric of Australian democracy. Again, train people in the art of bird dogging then. So we train people to turn up with perhaps B1 and B costumes, engage in the political construct, speak with their members. I think, you know, in, in South Australia, because you're from South Australia. I'd, I'd like to, uh, to go, perhaps we can talk to you about some of the members and what they did in South Australia, if you'd like to hear about that. Not particularly. I'm more interested in asking some questions about this campaign mode, uh, bird dogging, but I want to get on to some other topics. But... With respect, these are the people you're speaking about. What you're doing is you're saying... No, I'm sorry. Oh, um, uh, uh, with, you know, uh, with respect, Mr Edries, uh, I get to ask the questions. Sure. Uh, and I didn't ask you about activities of your individual members. I'm asking about... I've got no issue with your members. I've got issues with the structure of... Getting I, I up think and we're just doing fairly characterising our members. I'm not, I'm not characterising them at all. I'm suggesting that you get up the organisational wing and campaign in a way that can, that effectively trains them in the art of bird dogging in the hope that they might act inappropriately. Can I just put an assertion to you? I'm going to assert that it was, in fact, get up's irresponsible incitement and promotion of bird dogging that led directly to the stalking activity 
and the vicious nature of the campaign that was targeted towards Nicole Flint in Boothby and Georgina Downer in Mayo. Now, you'll deny that, won't you? So if I can just give an example of what, for the members of the other, uh, the other members of the committee and for the public listening at home. I'll suggest you re respond to the assertion, because I'm asserting if that I irresponsibly has incited people to stalk if I can answer the question, female Liberal candidates. If I can give an example of what we consider bird dogging is and what our members engage in. Uh, sure. I'll read from our, um, one of our members uh, put a submit, it contributed to our submission. Uh, Peter Coombs, who's one of Australia's best known children's singer songwriters, he, he wrote uh, during the 2019 campaign, so I did what I do best. I sang songs. If I can learn my skills and talent to help change people's minds on the impending climate crisis, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Peter Coombs sang songs. He went to events and sang songs. And you know what Mr Walsh did? Mr Walsh followed Nicole Flint with a camera day and night. And indeed, he even pressed that camera up against a window in a private event. With respect. Yeah. I, I suggest we, I think I've made my point about bird dogging. I think, I think we've made our point too. We've answered that several times with David Walsh and no association with get up. And, and just no, no, no. Well, sorry, I'm I'm not sure we're clear about that. You suggested that membership of GetUp means people who take action on their mailing list, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, any the definition, Dave Walsh is a member of GetUp. With GetUp, was he likes some Facebook posts? That's it. We investigated it. That's 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 it. So you can. Okay, let's go to Mr. Bunny then. Miss, Mr. Bunny followed Georgina Downer to her personal address and then, in his infinite wisdom, posted it on Facebook which is consistent, by the way, with your training module. That is, find out what their routines are, et cetera, et cetera. That's also and, very and, and, you're now, and I know you're going to take on notice whether Mr Bunny was a member of GetUp or not, but I'm pretty confident he was. Sure, and, that, and that's what you've just asserted is very inconsistent with how we train our members. So to suggest that we have, you know, arm strength control over every single member, whether Mr Bunny is or isn't a member, is really not appropriate. We have with respect, to Mr Idris, when you weaponise individuals with um, techniques like bird dogging, you can't then step back and say the behaviour that occurred from this point is not our responsibility. That's why there needs to be strong oversight, inconsistent with what Ms Henrietta Smith said, which is we take a low-key, effectively, I think the words were at least a low-touch, low low, low, um, low, low low control approach. Can I move away from bird dogging? I think I've made my point about that campaign technique and how abhorrent it is. Chair, chair, um, can I just ask? Some... That chair, sorry, I don't want. I don't want to wish. I didn't wish to interrupt, but uh, we can we have an understanding of how the time's going to be divided up? Because we do. Uh, as as Peter Smith around, I, I, you'll find them a pretty uh, fair chair, and I know to you. Well, we're back down to twenty minutes on uh, Mr. Passon's questions, yes. and of course, and it's, it's very important. <laughs> So we're just asking, have you got an idea of how you're going to split up the time? Well, Mr. Parsons asked some very important questions concerning the, the stalking of a female member of parliament, which I'm sure is an issue that concerns all of us. Um, after uh, the show, we'll be going to Senator Adet, and then I'll be going to uh, opposition members. Well, can you... Well, give me a... I've got a question. And, and out, you should be able to give us an outline of... Um, the timing then. These witnesses are If it helps, Chair, I've got about five minutes on financial matters. I've got okay. questions as well, Chair. Excellent. Well, after uh, Mr. Carson finishes in about five minutes' time, we'll go to Senator Abetz, then I'll go to Senator Brown, and then I think I heard you, Senator Waters. Yes, thanks, Chair. Senator, okay. uh, so, Mr. Wait, will be asking so, questions for us, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks Senator Brown. Cheers. So I'm just going to move the focus to financial affairs. So how many paid staff does get up employed and has, how has that changed since 2016? Sorry, sorry um, changed since 2016? Yeah, since the 2016 election. Uh, I can't... Um, I don't well, perhaps you can answer. take that question. So you can take that question at notice. Uh, I was going to say I don't have the details going back that far, but we have approximately 53 full-time equivalent at the moment. During the 2019 election, it was uh, 106. There's been a lot of speculation regarding salaries at GetUp. Um, 
Do you want to put to an in the conjecture, Kadir? Uh, is get up prepared to outline actual remunerations of board members, including the chair? Sorry, can you repeat that? There's been some conjecture about remunerations at, at GetUp. Is um, is is GetUp prepared to outline the remuneration of and salaries of board members, including the chair? Uh, so all of our, um, we, we pay our staff in line with uh, Pro Bono Australia standards. Uh, we're very proud that we uh, pay fair wages. Uh, we have a certified agreement, which is uh, publicly available on the Fed website. Uh, in regards to um, wages for our board members and national directors, um, that's, that's a matter for GetUp. Uh, you wouldn't be asking those questions of our, um, other political campaigners. So if you want to set that standard, then we're happy to comply, but um, we need to see action. Okay. Well. So speaking about standards, um, what comparisons is any within the NGO and charity sector or any indeed any other sector has GetUp undertaken to determine the proportion of income from donation it spends on campaign activity versus staff and admin costs uh, along best practices? So we're a campaigning organisation. So 89% of our income uh, is, is this spent on campaigning activities, including our staff. A very small proportion is spent on um, admin activities, which support our campaigning activities. So I'm looking at 2019 financials, uh, $13.2 million in gross revenue, uh, um, admin, admin and employee benefits, or I'll go just as employee being benefits, $7.2 million vis-a-vis uh, -vis an overall income of 13.2. Is that accurate? Uh, that sounds correct, yes. Yep. Has um, GetUp ever sought guidance from or formal advice from ACNC on this issue? That is, you know, what's best practice in terms of donations and um, the, you know, um, wages versus you know, um, output? Um, we're not a charity, so we don't come under the guidance of the ACNC. When you speak to members about donations, do you make it clear that the majority of the donation will go towards staff wages? We make it clear that the majority goes towards campaigning, of which staffing is a significant component. Do you specifically indicate that the majority of the donated funds will go towards staff wages? As I just said, we make it clear that the majority of our donations go towards campaigning. Staffing is a component of campaigning. To suggest otherwise, I don't know what sort of campaigning that you undertake, but that's how um, we operate. That's how most Unlike operate. Get Up's campaign in Boothby, I, I undertake successful campaigns. Which mem um, can I just ask, in terms of Get Up's um, flights policy, what what um, what is Get Up's flight policy in terms of um, um, class of travel, flexibility, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, the, we have a standard travel policy, best available uh, fare of the day. Um, in relation to seniority, do you have uh, classes of travel for senior members, i.e. do senior members fly business class? No, we do not. Travel by bus um, to Canberra when I'm needed. Um, now, um, Can I just ask a question? Um, and I said to members of the committee, for timeliness' sake, I'll submit a number of questions on uh, GetUp's code of conduct um, in writing. But can I just ask two final questions? One relates to uh, members per se. Um, do you um, receive or have you received any complaints from members regarding the um, um, the acquittal of their donated funds? i.e. when there was media reports regarding um, the proportion of wages that get up relative to its total income. Did you receive any complaints from that? I couldn't think of anything specific. Um, we often, you know, our members will give us all sorts of feedback. Um, I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. If we, if we, if we did, we would have discussed it with our members and um, we would have worked through any of those concerns. Okay, so just a couple of uh, last question, if I could. As I said, a number of questions about GetUp's code of conduct as it related to generally, but in relation to South Australia in particular. But 
were either um, Paul Bunny or Dave Walsh suspended or expelled from get up? We would have to take our notice. Thank you. And lastly, um, how is get up's code of conduct enforced? You'd have to be more specific if, the, the, if you have a particular question. Thank you. I will be more specific. Uh, Mr. Bunny was suspended from the activist group Get Up, according to the information I have, which you'll confirm uh, either way. Um, how do we? Uh, how does Get Up ensure that he's not re-enfranchised with Get Up? That is, is the war is he entitled to rejoin? Uh, like I said, I have to take my notice. Thank you. And that's all from me. Over to you. Um, Mr Chair, thank you, colleagues. I appreciate your indulgence. Thank you, uh, Mr Paston, for that. Uh, Senator Betts, are, are you online? I am indeed. Hopefully you can hear me, Chair. I, I can hear you. Please start your question. Good. Thank you. Is Mr Easting watching or he listening into these proceedings? I imagine he has access to the uh, live stream, as everyone else does in Australia. So he is available, he is listening in to the best of your knowledge, information and belief. I just answered that question. Sorry? I just answered the question. Is he listening in? Like I said, I just answered the question. He has access to it, what he's doing outside of this room, I can see. So why is this listening not with us? You may have missed this question. We answered it earlier. Andrew and myself are the ex matter experts on this matter, uh, on the election and on the detail around the election and on democratic reform and empowering members. That's why we're here. Although well, I did hear that answer and it surprised me because the submission or submission 83 to the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters is in fact not authored by ourselves, but by what Paul Lucy. And so I was wanting to ask questions of the actual author of the submission rather than others. So can I ask, would Mr. Boosting be available for questioning if the committee would call him? The, the authoring of the uh, submission is by way of a formal document. It comes from GetUp, therefore it's written by his hand. Uh, Andrew and I are both here to talk to the submissions and to answer those questions. If it's a collective submission, I mean, you know, policy is written by different heads of department all the time, and we don't always have those heads of department turning up to answer questions. Yeah, but that stops with Mr. Oosting, who was the author and who submitted the um, submission for the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters. Yes. And, and so perhaps you could take the approach that it was authorised by him because everything else that comes out of here is authorised by Paul Oosting. So everything authorised by GetUp is authorised by Paul Oosting. That's a matter that we uh, are consistent with across the board. Um, we like to take those matters seriously, and it was simply consistent to suggest that he would be here because he authored uh, the document in in uh, the absence of Mr. Blake and myself, who do the work on this issue, is not really that relevant. If you have right. questions on the uh, submission, very happy to take those questions. So yes, so who's the top official in GetUp? Uh, I think you know the answer. Paul Listing's the national director. Thank you. And so the top official has not made himself available to answer questions in relation to a document for which he has taken responsibility. Can I take you to page three of the committee members of the submission 83, page three of Mr. Oosting's um, submission to the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters? And there in bold orange colour, we are told the AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, especially, uh, specifically finding GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, that, that is correct. Right. Are you aware of what the Chief Electoral Commissioner, and it's amazing, isn't it, that the Chief Electoral Commissioner is able to make himself available for the inquiries, but 
Will I ask you on the 22nd of October 2019, page 144 of Finance and Public Administration Senate Estimates, have you ever declared about any organisation that their campaigns are 100% issues based? Mr. Rogers, we have not declared that. I then asked, right, because they assert, referring to GetUp, the AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, specifically finding GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. Mr. Rogers, under oath, said to the Senate committee that that is not something we would have said in any way, shape, or form. Do you still stand by your assertion that what you have submitted to this committee is the truth? I stand by the assertion that GetUp is independent, that we're members no, of the No, 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 no. The question is that you have asserted in bold, proof in orange, and then in dark type, the AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, specifically finding GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. Now, just for clarification, specifically finding means precisely, exactly, clearly finding GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. The AEC Commission has said that they would never say anything like that in any way, shape or form. Please answer the question as to whether that assertion on page three of your submission is correct. I think the AEC finding is a different thing to what we're saying here. And what we're saying is we are, we weren't an associated entity and we are 100% issues based. If there is a semantic difference, I accept that and I wouldn't want to put words in anyone's mouth and I accept that, but we are 100% issues based. We're member driven and we hear about our members. We're not an associated entity, which is why it appears on our independence page. Where we about our independence. Can you just answer the question? You may well say you're 100% issues based. That's fine. It is completely different to assert that the Independent Australian Electoral Commission has determined specifically finding that GetUp campaigns are 100% issues based. No semantics there. Your exact words being quoted exactly back to you, which have been repudiated by the Australian Electoral Commissioner. Do you still stand by this assertion that you have submitted to this committee on oath, which the Commissioner has repudiated on oath? If the Commissioner has repudiated that assertion, but that's for, for him to say and happy for him to do that. We believe that we're 100% issues based and we'll maintain that approach. If the Commission says he hasn't, like I said, I would not want to put words in the AAC's mouth. They do great work. They do Did, you great work. Did you have put words into the AEC Commissioner's mouth? specifically misleading this committee and the public by asserting that the Australian Electoral Commission has specifically found get up campaigns of 100% issues based. And we're happy to speak to the Commissioner about that if we've, if we've in any way offended his decision, and I will definitely do that after this. Well, it's, it's not about offending him, it is about willfully misleading because I would invite you to show us anywhere where that assertion has been made by the Australian Electoral Commissioner. And as I, and as I said, if the Commissioner says um, we didn't do it, happy to be in that position to speak to him about it. We've had three inquiries which have upheld our independence. We are not an associated entity of any um, political party in Australia, which is the point of the independent statement. Like I said, Mr. Rebetz, no, no, no. The, the point of your independent statement is seeking the cloak of authority from the Electoral Commission 
sustained by your assertion. But look, that's the first one. The second assertion is the AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, specifically finding GetUp plays an important role on election day. And I asked Mr. Rogers, the electoral commissioner on page 144 of the same uh, Senate estimate hearing that I've uh, referenced before, do you make any finding that any organisation plays an important role on election day? Mr. Rogers on oath, no, we do not. Why is it that you have misled the committee yet again with that false assertion, given Mr. Rogers has said under oath to the Senate that that is simply not correct? Look, I, I can't comment on what Mr. Rogers said. That's for him to say. What we have said is we do play an important part, and the finding by the AEC that. Oh, no, no, no. Look, if, 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 if I can finish the question, if I can finish my answer. If the AEC has said that our a number of things, and I don't have the determination in front of me, but they have uh, said a number of things with respect to maintaining the fact that we are not an associated entity and that our campaigning was not associated with any other organisation, and that is necessarily the point of our assertion that we're an important part by extension of the democratic process here in Australia. Yes, but what you have sought to do is to quote the authority of the Australian Electoral Commission in support of that assertion, something that the Australian Electoral Commissioner on oath has specifically repudiated. And therefore, I invite you on notice to provide us with the evidence that allows you to make that false assertion. And what you've done is put words into the Electoral Commissioner's mouth, which you repudiate, to try to cloak yourself with some independence. Let me go to the third point. The AEC ruled in GetUp's favour as recently as February this year, specifically finding GetUp is non-partisan. And I asked uh, Mr Rogers, um, do you make any specific findings that an organisation is non-partisan? Answer, no, we do not. So in the three bolded headings on page three, where you seek to assert your independence, you falsely put words into the mouth of the Australian Electoral Commissioner, something which he repudiated virtually 12 months ago on the 22nd of October 2019, and you still stand by these false assertions? We have, we have the highest of respect for the Australian Electoral Commission, and as I mentioned a couple of times already, immediately after this, I'm happy to make contact with them, make sure that we are satisfied that the AEC um, you know, are satisfied that with what we're doing and we'll engage with them on these matters. What I think is important, and it seems, Mr. Abetz, that you've made your mind up about this already, but I think it's fair, it's fair everyone to hear that. The substance of the determination was that GetUp is not an associated entity. Three times over, GetUp is not an associated entity. Perhaps for completeness, I'll say it a third time. GetUp is not an associated entity of any political party. And that is the substance of the decisions, the determinations that were made a number of times. And I have the profoundest of respect for the Australian Electoral Commission. And immediately after this, in fact, we'll reach out to um, the commissioner. And if there was you know, something that we did which offended his position or a determination that was made, we'll readily correct that. If you have a profound respect for the Australian Electoral Commissioner, you would not be falsely putting words into his mouth. And I sub submit to you that you must have been aware of the evidence of the Australian Electoral Commissioner of the 22nd of October 2019. If not being mentioned at Senate estimates, would not be something that would be overlooked with all your staff, with all your resources. You would have been aware of that, and yet you have not sought to amend your submission 
in any way, shape or form, despite this now having been in the public domain for virtually 12 months as false assertions one, two and three. With respect, I don't think they're false assertions and I'll tell you why. Like I've just said, we have been found independent on a number of occasions, most recently February 2019, 2018, 2019. What that says is that GetUp is not an associated entity of any political party. And that's what this independence... With, if I could finish, Senator... No, 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 I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. This is not relevant. We know what the finding of these... Is. In, in respect of answering your question, what these submissions do and what most submissions do is they take a highly technical and complicated decision handed down by a government authority and break them down into something that is readable, reasonable and easy for people to read. If well, very run, easy for people to read full if, if I could finish, Mr. Betts, if I could finish, what we have done in breaking down all of these very technical decisions, which are laden with legislation and difficulties, is to have our members read and appreciate what it is that the AEC in effect has said about our campaigning. Now, I accept in your previous statements that Commissioner Rogers has said he wouldn't have used those exact words and uh, oh. said, I will, I will go and speak to Mr Rogers or to his team and, and, and I, will, I will do that and I'm happy to do that because I think it maintains that relationship that we have tried to maintain in good relationship with the AEC over a number of years. And like I said, what we've done is we have maintained that respect and we'll continue to maintain that level of respect. And all I can say is we've taken this technical discussion, broken it down into something that is a little bit more digestible. And, and you can laugh all you like, Senator Beth. Well, this is the oh, I agree because the Electoral Commission has said that he didn't say that in any way, shape, or at all. And, I, and that's I, technical about that. Nothing. Right. Like and I accept that. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. I accept that's what he said because I have no reason to suggest otherwise. But what I'm saying is what we have done is make the decision easy for our members and for the Australian policy, policy to read and understand that the substance of the decisions three times over that we get up were independent and not associated with entities of any political parties. I can't say that enough times. I've heard what you said, Senator Rebecca, oh. and I'll definitely speak to the Commissioner or his representatives immediately. And are you really asserting that GetUp was not aware of the Electoral Commissioner's evidence of over 12 months ago that those three false assertions in GetUp submission were not uh, what the AEC had determined? I've already answered that question. Which was? I just answered it at length three times over. No, which was? Would, are you telling this committee you were not aware of the Electoral Commissioner's evidence the 22nd of October 2019 until today? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head if I've heard anything about that. It sounds reasonably new to me, if that's what you're saying. It's the first time I've heard you quoting those things. And I just wanted the best I could. It's the first time we've spoken. So, of course, it's the first time you've heard me say this. But are you aware of the evidence of the Electoral Commissioner of the 22nd of October 2019? The answer would be a simple yes or no that you were made aware of this before today. I, I didn't. I'll ask my colleague if you. Uh, we've already answered. Mr. Mr. Oosting's in the background. He might be able to tell you as well. Like I've said to you before, Mr. Oosting's not in the room. I don't know what he's doing, and that's all I can say. All right. Look, uh, moving on to some other questions. You seen senior organisers around the country from time to time to campaign in suits. Yes, when we can. And the names of Jack, Jack Whitcart, Sean Murray. Alessandra and Moliterno and Billy Marshall, they would be known to you? Yes. Yes, and you know these people, you gave them jobs? Yes. And they would know about the bullying, would they not? I imagine they would have uh, engaged in campaign tactics, you know, with our members. 
Yeah, including the information that you had on, what was it called, the National Hive or something like that? I, if that's what, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but sure, I think that's what Mr. Passon has referred to. sounds familiar to you, Dasimus. So, you see, Jake Wishbart was behind the church invasion at a candidate's forum at the Holy Trinity Church in Hastings in Flinders. Is that correct? I, I couldn't tell you. Well, did you approve of that behaviour? I, I did, we wouldn't have approved of any misbehaviour, if that's the question you're asking. All right, but it was Mr Sean Murray to pick on somebody else that's bragged about being charged with trespass and has said GitHub as a movement is increasingly up for physically intervening to prevent injustice, according to GitHub. But physically intervening, is that a statement that you repudiated, saying that GitHub as a movement increasingly up for physically intervening? Uh, this sounds familiar, and I'm pretty sure this was a smear from News Corp in the, in the newspaper. Um, so, uh, look, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's worth a response. I've already answered the question on our, on our behaviour. Well, this, is this, is not a smear from, this is not a smear from News Corp. This is a statement by one of your operatives, Sean Murray, the beta. Get up as a movement is increasingly up for physically intervening. What sort of action did GetUp take against Mr Murray for those statements? We wouldn't necessarily take action because we do not engage in what you might call um, physical and what we would call physical is very different. There's no bad behaviour. You know, physical action from us is turning up to somewhere and holding a sign and making people aware that, you know, and, and as, as our members did, 9,000 of them on election day, um, handing out, you know, how to vote cards and holding up signs and reminding people about the issues that were really important to us. To suggest that uh, Sean saying physical is anything but that is a little bit physical. All right, do, do you know Scott Marsh, the graffiti artist? No. You haven't met him at all? No, I have not. He's never been engaged by Getter? I, I couldn't tell you. Right. Um, look, just for absolute clarity, have a quick look at this video clip for me. All right. Now, does that, does that person, can you recognise that person at all? No, no. No? All right. Then, finally, can I ask, um, you raised money, uh, money off the back to quote, um, and that was in relation to uh, Mr Marsh, was it not? Uh, totally false accusations about this fellow, so GetUp could take swift and forceful action by engaging top solicitors and barristers immediately to take appropriate action. Can you advise the committee what legal action did you take? Um, if there was legal action taken, it was privileged, so I'm not in a position where I can uh, respond to that. <laughs> Right. Um, were any proceedings filed? I, I'm not too sure what you're talking about. None that I know of. Legal action, proceedings filed. I would have thought that would be pretty obvious. Um, but look, uh, in how, much, one, sorry, how sorry. much money did you raise? Just, just sorry, you just asked a question about legal proceedings and I wasn't quite sure in relation to what that was about. The quote I just yeah, gave Karen, you, Carol that, here uh, again. Can we get an indication on when um, Senator Betts will finish his questioning? Because we are yeah, now at yeah. the advertised. Uh, um, I'm pretty certain that has nothing to do with us, Mr. Uh, I'm just about to finish, Senator Brown. So, how much money did you raise off the back of this claim that uh, you needed money to deal with a totally false accusation and the top solicitors and barristers 
to take appropriate immediately to take appropriate legal action. So if you raise money to immediately take legal action, you now tell us that you can't uh, because of um, um, uh, legal privilege. Was any action taken? Sure. I might, what? I might just take a step back. My response to legal privilege was because you wouldn't ordinarily discuss a legal matter. With respect to this gentleman that you're mentioning, I don't think it was actually had anything to do with us at all. Right. And, and that is why you sought to take legal action to protect the good name of GetUp. And I want to know how much money did you raise from uh, that? If we, if we sent an email asking for money for fundraising, I couldn't tell you what that was about. Like I said, I don't well, think this matters. If you, can take, if you can please take on notice then, is, how is much it, money? Is there how a particular relevance to the 2019 election with this question, Senator Betts? Sorry? Is there a particular relevance to this question to the 2019 election? Yes, absolutely, because this was activity undertaken during the 2019 election by an individual that was potentially linked to GetUp, and GetUp during that campaign said and asked the extra funds to be able to uh, engage top solicitors and barristers immediately to take appropriate legal action. I would have thought extremely relevant, as you well know, how now that this has given you time to think, what is your answer? I still, I still don't. I don't think there's a connection between this gentleman and any fundraising that we did, which is the question I'm asking back to you. Oh yes, yes. Um, I'm talking about the uh, fellow who put it up, and if I didn't make that clear, my oh. apologies. That the vulgar campaign against Tony Abbott in the suit of Waringa. That has nothing to do with us. Yeah, and as a result, you sought to raise money. I don't think those two things are connected. Oh, really? So I'd, have to find, I'd have to find out. I got the obscene poster campaign in the seat of Warringah, which I think Get Up itself described as vulgar. Yes. But nevertheless, nevertheless, you sought to raise money off the back of that because the accusation of linking Get Up to it was right. totally false. And therefore, get up could would take swift and forceful action by engaging top solicitors and barristers. How much money did you raise off the back of that campaign, and how much was spent on legal costs? Right. Thank you for the clarification. Right. Can you take that on notice, please? And then finally, Chair, can I ask again? Will Mr. Boosting make himself available to the committee if asked to appear? And secondly, in the event that the Australian Electoral Commissioner stands by his sworn evidence before the Electoral, uh, before the Finance and Public Administration Committee of the 22nd of October 2019, will get up place an advertisement to publicly apologise for the falsehoods that they have asserted not once, not twice, but three times in relation to what the Australian Electoral Commissioner found. I'm sorry, is that a question for when Yes, it was. Will you on. place an advertisement to correct such a record where you have so egregiously misquoted the Electoral Commissioner. I, I think, again, you know, um, look, I, I've answered this a number of times. I will take action after this call to go and contact the Commissioner. No, 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 no. Will, will, you please, will you place an advertisement, either yes or no? Yeah, look, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a yes or no answer. And the short answer is no, because um, yeah, you know, no, I, I could have predicted that. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you much. Thank you very much, Senator Abed.